Good morning, Lynchburg. This is Kristen, and it's April 28, 2010. You are tuning in to When in Sage Will Mind Speak. This morning, I have the privilege of sharing my time with a dynamic young man by the name of Kwasi Vengensai. He is the creator of Shades of Black and is creating a strong vision and building a legacy that the African American community can be proud of. This morning, for our topic, we are having helping the identity of men of color, striving to live out your full potential. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Kwapi V to WIMS. Good morning, Kwapi. Good morning. Exactly what is Shades of Black? When did it start? What is it that you do? What's your goals? Um, Shades of Black, um, the first Shades of Black was on, I think, January 22nd, 2004. And so... Um, it's a showcase that I created to kind of celebrate the different textures and dimensions of the black experience. We had, um, while within the Northwest, while within Idaho, because I, I was at the University of Idaho, and there's Washington State University, which is just six miles away. And so what had happened was you had a you had very dynamic and very vibrant black student organizations, you know, the Divine Nine, the Cap Off, Kafka Alpha Psi, Zeta Phi Beta, you had the African students, you had so much, so many things going on, but there wasn't a showcase that kind of brought us together as people who shared the same heritage, people who shared the same descent. And so that's where the show, that's, that was the original motivation for the show. Now, when you first began, I know now over the past six years or more, it's grown so much. Did you ever expect it to become so popular, to get so big? Um, Not really. You know, it's, it was one of those things where you did it not knowing how long, you know, it would go for. I thought maybe, we, you know, we'd get a good two, three years out of it, then it would fizzle, but, you know, you know, seven years later, it's still one of the most, it has become one of the most dynamic showcases out here in the Northwest. Now, did you go to school in the United States? I went to school back home. I went to high school back home, then came here for college. Okay. And just seeing, um, I know because you are so in tune with the socioeconomic status of America, I know that you know what's going on as far as with the education system and mm-hmm. how there is um, a lot of struggling with funding and finding courses that are competent. And um, the history of America is often taught repetitively through public schools. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that because America is a mixing pot, that there should be greater emphasis on the diverse cultures that make up America? I mean, this is what this country markets itself as, you know, as the as the most socially advanced, you know, nation in the world. And I think with that context, you know, it has to accommodate that within an academic capacity. You know, how... How exactly do, I, I feel like maybe it differs from state to state, demographic to demographic, and so I can't really say, you know, with a blanket, you know, statement that yes, you know, this is what they need to do. However, I feel like as a country that pitches itself as you know the most socially advanced, the most, you know, um, tolerant in terms of policy on diversity, tolerance, and all those things, I feel as if yes, a little more emphasis has to be put on diversity, a little more emphasis on the history of the different cultures that make up what America is. I mean, I know personally, growing up in a family that expressed so much of the African-American culture (laughs) and the importance of it and causing me to recognize, you know, that there is a lot of strength and that there's a lot of beauty in being black despite Mm -hmm. what, you know, other cultures were saying at the time that I was growing up. So why do you that what we express... um, culturally and, um, you know, just in, just in general, because sometimes Shades of Black, you don't get criticized, but some of your biggest praise comes from the fact that you guys aren't politically correct, that you guys choose to mm-hmm. tell things from your personal experience. And mm-hmm. so um, how is it that the cultural pride is important to strengthening your society and your race? Well, you know, with Shades of Black, what happens is... um. You know, in fact, it was like uh, how the political incorrectness thing came about was uh, a couple years ago we had an advisor, you know, for the show. Mm-hmm. And um, what had happened was, you know, like our MC, the, he was a, he's a comedian, you know, and he cusses, you know. And so I went in and I was like, you know, 
we want to get this guy, but he's he's he, he's our cuss, you know. Mm-hmm. But is it okay, you know? And then and Bob Faisal, who happened to be Hispanic, you know, said, you know, that's what expression is. You know, once you start going and sensing what people say, it takes away from the essence of who they are or the essence of what they're trying to express, you know. And I think like um, as black people, you know, um. Our culture represents our essence, whether or not we're talking something more contemporary like hip-hop or we're going back to something as, you know, as ingrained in our culture as gospel music, as, you know, as stepping, as, you know. And so I think, like, you know, but sometimes even as black people, we kind of get lost in the way. You know, we kind of fall off to the side and so forth. But I don't know if I answered your question. You know, okay. But, now, yeah. I, I want to go deeper into that. You said that, you know, we kind of fall to the side, and, you know, that may bring a lot of different perspectives of how we do. How are you seeing that um, young men, especially? Mm-hmm. Are uh, how, are we, how are we falling to the wayside? Yes. Um, I feel like, um, from my observation, you know, like, from my show example, you know, so there's the show aspect of it, and then there's the after party, you know. But we'll do the show where, you know, it's black people coming together, showing the best of who we are, you know, saying the best of what we're about, you know, to the community and trying to bring, build community amongst ourselves. And then two hours later at the after party, you have, you know, young black men fighting over something as stupid as, oh, he stepped on my sneaker, mm-hmm. you know. And so, like, We've been dealing with that dynamic where, you know, sometimes we are a contradiction. Mm. You know, we talk about black advancement. We talk about doing all these things to uplift the community, but yet we're the same thing that's holding our community back. You know, we're talking black on black violence. We're talking, you know, young men not knowing how to treat black women respectfully. There's so many things that are going on, you know. We know what we're supposed to be. You know, we talk the game, but sometimes we we very rarely, you know, you know, lift to those expectations. And I think that's what's happening with young black men in general. Like, we have an identity crisis, mm. you know, where we know how we're supposed to act. We know what our culture says. We know how we're supposed to interact with, with people, women, and so forth. But somehow along the line, in a moment of, you know, of, I don't know, excitement or stupidity, I don't know what you want to call it, we kind of lose track of where we're trying to go as black mm-hmm. people, you know. You, and, you know, in this day and age, there's no excuse, you know. Ignorance is not ex- an excuse anymore. Your strength and identity is really something for just American men in general to really live up to. What you're doing in your community, the unity that you're creating, um, you know, just how much respect that I know that you have for other people and for their opinions is definitely something for us to strive to. And um, I just want to close off with this quote that I found that comes from you, Quappy. It oh. says, I am enthusiastically black. But beyond that, I now realize that I cannot simply be defined by a color. I'm a product of unique experiences, personal or collective, cultural or political. Oddly enough, it seems as though in professing our blackness, we as a community have become blind and insensitive to the adversity within ourselves. And that comes right from you. And um, I'm just going to let that speak for itself. I'm not even going to try to interpret that personally um, because, you know, words hold so many value to different people. But I just so appreciate you coming on When Insatiable Minds Speak. We are a radio program that's restoring unity by advocating and honoring the beauty and strength of individuality. So until next time, let's not be fearful to be different in order to make a difference. And be sure to check us out on the website, www.icdat56.org. Thank you so much to WLLL for loaning us this radio time. I thank you.